It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Jello, everybody. Yes, it's the Gay Family series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning. Transcribed and brought to you by the Jell-O family of Red Letter Desserts. J-E-L-L Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, sir. And now, Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on 321 Bundy Drive, Sheridan Falls, it's late afternoon. Liz is just arriving home from her club meeting and is met at the door by George. Hi, Liz. Hi, George. Are you home already? No, I'm still at the office. Give me a kiss. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, this is a switch. I'm coming home and you're meeting me at the door. We're on different sides of the kiss. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How'd things go at the bank today, dear? Oh, pretty good. I spent the day breaking the points off the bank pens. (laughs) What did you do? Oh, I went down to the beauty parlor and had my weekly henna rinse. (laughs) (laughs) Joke's over. (laughs) I was just kidding, honey. I know. As a matter of fact, I had a very educational day at the club. We had a lecture on older people and how they can be kept happy and useful. Is there any hope for you? (laughs) You think you're being funny, but he pointed out a lot about me. I have no hobby. No. Everybody should have a hobby, and I'm going to get one. It will not only keep me interested and active, but after you're gone, I won't be lonesome. Well. (laughs) Well, if you want to... What do you mean, after I'm gone? Well, when you're... Gone, and I'm a pale but still attractive widow. (laughs) Tell me, Liz, how did I go? Quietly in my sleep? (laughs) Look, honey, you wouldn't want me to be lonely and unhappy, now would you, until I remarry? (laughs) Remarry? After a respectful interlude, of course. George, when you go, I want to be prepared. Stop to... saying when I go. <laughs> what makes you so sure I'm going first? Well, statistics prove that you are, aren't you? <laughs> no, it would be impolite. Ladies go first. <laughs> Mother told me. All right, you can make fun if you want to, but I'm going down to the art store first thing in the morning and try on a hobby for size. Maybe I should get a hobby, too. I think you should. After all, if it doesn't work out the way you plan, I might not remarry for several months. You? Remarry? How can you think of such a thing? Well, you did. Well, that's different. You just try it and you'll have me to reckon with. <laughs> You. Liz, don't tell me you found a way to sneak back. George Cooper, let's get this settled right now. If you don't give me your solemn promise not to remarry after I go, I stay. (laughs) How do you do? Hello. Welcome to Carl's Arts and Crafts, the culture center of the community. I am Carl. Oh, I'm Mrs. Cooper. Uh, I want to start a hobby that will help me while away my time in 40 years or so when I'm 80, uh, 70, uh, when I'm an old lady. (laughs) Of course, art is your answer. Painting is the key to self-expression. Oh, really? What kind of painting? Oh, I have all media. What do you usually like to work in? Oh, just an old house dress. (laughs) Hmm. 
I mean the medium. Watercolor, tempera, pastels, finger painting. Oh, finger painting. That sounds good. I wouldn't have to buy anything. I already have fingers. <laughs> good. <laughs> are, are these the right kind of fingers? Well, you can start with those. Later on, I'll sell you some better ones. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> no, finger painting is really too elementary for you, Mrs. Cooper. You should have something more expensive, uh, more advanced. Uh, sculpturing would be perfect for you. Here's some clay over there. Uh, go ahead, try to make something out of that clay. Oh, no, I couldn't. I'm no good at this sort oh, of thing. Oh, how can you tell till you try? I wouldn't want to sell it to you till I see if you have a feeling for it. Well, I know, but I'd rather Go not... ahead. Dig right in with your hands and see what you can do. Well, like this? That's it. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Sort of like making mud pies. <laughs> Once you get on to it, you'll... <gasps> Mrs. Cooper! What? Look at that clay! Did I do something wrong? Wrong was Michelangelo wrong. Why, you've taken that shapeless mass of clay and already you've breathed life into it. <laughs> Who, me? <coughs> I've never seen such form, such rhythm, such movement. Really? It's just something I squeezed together. <laughs> I know, but it was the way you squeezed it. <laughs> oh, the world is waiting for a squeezer like yours. <laughs> oh, you don't mean that. No, believe me, Mrs. Cooper, any commasseur... Oh, no, wait. We are in luck. What? Do you see that gentleman browsing around the old masters over there? Yeah. He's a famous art critic. Oh, really? Yes, one of the best in America. Let's see what he thinks. Hmm? Oh, Professor, I'd like your opinion on something, please. Well, certainly, Carl. What is it? Uh, Professor, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Cooper. Uh, Mrs. Cooper... Carl! This <laughs> sculpture... When did you get it in? It's magnificent. If that's what I wanted to ask you about, Mrs. Cooper just made it. Just made yeah. it? Right before your eyes? So help me. Madam, I salute you. You must have studied years to achieve such a talent. I never had a lesson in my life. Down on your knees, Carl. <laughs> presence of a genius. Oh, get up, fellas. You make me feel silly. Oh, Mrs. Cooper, you owe it to the world to continue your sculpturing. Oh, gee, I, I guess I'll take some clay. How much will I need? Ten pounds? Uh, make it 25. Make it 50. Uh, and you'll need a set of tools and some wire for your frames. Yeah, well, I'll take them all. Send them right out to 321 Bundy Drive. Uh, I really shouldn't keep the world waiting any longer, should I? Oh, no. Well... Goodbye, Mrs. Cooper. Goodbye. Oh, Carl, what a thrill to launch new talent. All right, get off it, Sam. <laughs> Grab a broom and go clean up the back room like I told you to do this morning. <laughs> eh, okay. And another thing, the next aspiring artist that comes in, I get to be the professor. You have all the fun. <laughs> Hey, honey, I'm home. Hey, Liz, where are you? I'm home. Oh, now, where can she be? Hey, what, what's that sign on the door of the den? Hmm. Do not disturb genius at work. <laughs> Liz, what in the heck is it? George, didn't you see the sign? Liz, what are you doing? What's that outfit you have on? This is an artist smock and a tam. It's the official outfit of all of us sculptor assistants. <laughs> Sculpturesses. This morning at the art store, I was just experimenting with some clay, and there was a professor of art there, and he said that I am without a doubt 
an artistic genius. Really? Sure. I just finished that statue on the table. What do you think of it? Well, uh, you made that? Uh Uh-huh. All by yourself? Uh Uh-huh. What do you think of it? By George. So, so you made that all by yourself. Yeah, do you like it? Like it? Oh, gosh, honey, it's... Well, I've never seen anything. It's the most... So you made that all by yourself. Oh, I'll bet you don't even know what it is. Of course I know what it is. Anybody could tell. Well? Let me see it from the back. Okay. Hmm. Well? That's the back of it, all right. George, stop stalling. What do you think it is? <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing, honey. I, I knew what it was all the time. You did? Of course. Every detail is clear and sharp. Though those stems are sensational. Stems? <laughs> yes, sir. Anybody could tell as soon as they laid eyes on it, that's a bunch of grapes. (laughs) What's the matter? That's a man's head. (laughs) I hate you, George Cooper. Get out of here. Well, listen, ladies, you can be a sculptor right in your own kitchen. And this is strictly on the up and up. You can turn out works of art with Jell-O. Lovely to look at, delicious to eat, and quick as a wink to fix. You'll find a whole page of gay, exciting new Jell-O recipes in leading magazines for October. Try that Jell-O mincemeat mold for a brand new autumn treat. It's a grand and glorious combination of shimmering red cherry Jell-O Spicy, rich mincemeat and crunchy nuts. Look up the recipe, because that rich red cherry jello tastes even richer than ever, thanks to a new formula which captures the flavor of fresh-picked cherries as never before. All six delicious jello flavors are just chuck full of glorious fruit-like goodness. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell jello, a registered trademark of General Foods, that stands for America's Red Letter Desserts. J E L L O. And now back to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband. As we return to the Coopers, we find Liz, her artistic pride offended, sobbing in the den while George is trying to get her to open the door for him. Liz. Oh, come on, Liz. Let me in. I didn't mean anything. I'm sorry, baby. You don't think I have any talent. I do, too. I just don't have an eye for art. Come on, let, let, let me look at it again. Oh, Liz, now I see what you mean. That's real good. Oh. It is. Uh, But you've changed it, haven't you? Uh, Yes. It's wonderful. How did you do it so quickly? I threw it at you when you left the room. (laughs) No. I know what the trouble is, George. I've been trying to sculpt from this picture of the discus thrower. I need a model. A model? Yeah, someone tall and handsome with a good physique and lots of muscles. Well, I guess you would do better. Oh, George, can I hire a model? Oh, you're wonderful. Now, you don't have to waste money hiring a model. Well, where am I going to get a big, strong, handsome man? (laughs) George, why don't you answer me? I'm not doing anything tonight. Oh, honey, forgive me. I didn't even think about that. You go to a movie and enjoy yourself. (laughs) Thanks a lot. I hate to put it so bluntly, Liz, but if you need a model, I'll make the sacrifice. You? 
Well, let me see. Turn around. The other way. Well, thanks anyway, George. <laughs> what do you mean, thanks anyway? Well, it was a nice offer, but you're, you're just not the model type. You have a nice build and all, but... But what? Well, your muscles, they're all in your coat. <laughs> oh, is that so? Well, look at this picture of the discus thrower. He has big, bulging muscles, like an atlas. Well, I'll just show you. Uh, wait till I take my coat off. And my shirt. There. <clears throat> well, Gypsy Rose Cooper. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Just look at those muscles. Uh, I'll just bet you they're, they're as big as your discus throwers. Oh, George. Uh, does it give his dimensions? Yes, it says right here. Neck 17, Bickup's 20 inches. <laughs> That's biceps. Oh. 20 inches, huh? Yeah. Measure mine. Okay. Yours are 15. Hmm. Well, I didn't really have my arm flexed. Huh? <clears throat> now, now, what does it measure? Uh, 14 and a half. <laughs> There's something wrong with that tape measure. Look, honey, I'll call a model agency and hire someone. You will like heck. Liz, I, I don't mind your playing around with this stuff, but when you start throwing away good money on... on... What's the matter? You've got an awful lot of equipment here. How much did this junk cost? All right, George, I won't hire a model. <laughs> How much did it cost? Well, that's enough sculpting for tonight. Let's go to a movie. <laughs> How much did it cost? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? <laughs> Sounds like so much more when you say it. <laughs> Fifty dollars? Liz, tomorrow morning, all that junk goes back to the art store. Back? But, George, my art... Your art, my foot. Back it goes, and that's an order. Now, what have you got to say about that? <laughs> and then, Iris, he became completely unreasonable. Well, what do you mean, girl? He absolutely forbid me to hire a model. He did well, if I were you, I'd hire a model this afternoon. Oh, I can't do that. Why not? I hired one this morning. <laughs> oh, good girl, girl. I hated to go against George's wishes, but it's a crime to stifle a talent like mine. Oh, Iris, the doorbell. There he is. Call you later. Yes? Somebody here call for Muscles Malcolm? <laughs> uh, are you from the model agency? Yeah. Who's the artist? I am. Yous? <laughs> yeah, me's. <laughs> Come in. Thanks. Uh, this way, uh, muscles. I'm working in the den. Uh, uh, where do I undress? Oh, just go... Undress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take my clothes off. I presume you want me to pose all natural... Oh, natural. <laughs> yeah, that's French. It means... I you know what it means, I know. <laughs> Look, didn't you bring anything for sort of in-between? Well, only me tiger skin. Well, that's better. Where do I change me clothes? Use the den. Okay. Don't come in. <laughs> I won't. Just call me when you've got your skin on. Are you getting tired, Malcolm? Nah. I could stand here for hours. Me muscles are as strong as iron bands. Congratulations. Tell me, did you ever see an arm like this before? Well, yes, but it had a foot on it and they called it a leg. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> it don't make me laugh. It moves me muscles. <laughs> Hey, Liz, honey, I'm home. Oh, no, my husband's home early. Oh, that's nice. No, it's awful. Hide, quick. Well, I didn't do nothing. Hide! No, my actions are above reproach. Get in that closet. I don't want him to see you. I- I'll try to get rid of him. Liz, where are you? Uh, here I am, dear. What's new? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing much. Dinner ready? Dinner? Oh, uh, I'm glad you asked that, dear. We need some things for dinner. Would you mind running down to the store? As soon as I get my tobacco from the den. No, no, George, uh, go to the store. I'll tell you what we need. Oh! Why should you make such a fuss about this? I'll just take this tobacco and... Liz, whose clothes are those? <laughs> clothes? Yes. Yes, clothes. Oh, Yes. Well, they're clothes, all right. <laughs> yes, but whose? That's a very good question. <laughs> oh, they're yours, George. I cleaned out your closet this afternoon. Is it all right to throw those away? Those aren't my clothes. Oh, yes, they are. They're so old, you've forgotten them. But look at those shoes. They're, they're tremendous. They're yours. Huh. Wait till I try them on. Oh, don't be silly, George. If they're not yours, what would they be doing here? See, George, they fit you perfectly. Yes, but I've got my own shoes on inside of them. <laughs> well, you must have shrunk. I'll say I must have. Okay, Liz, now what's going on here? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what was that? What? <laughs> that. You must be dreaming, George. I didn't hear anything. Nobody sneezed. I didn't say anyone did. Oh. <laughs> Who's in that closet, Liz? No one, George. Gesundheit! Thank you. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Cooper... Can I put my clothes on now? <laughs> Who's in there, Liz? Would you believe me if I said my statue came to life? <laughs> no. I didn't think you would. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Say, you don't want to catch cold, old fellow. Put your clothes on. Huh? Thank you. Aren't you mad, George? Mad? Oh, no, not at all, dear. Well, why should I be? Well, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> do to you? Why, nothing, darling. Don't nothing, darling me. You're acting too sweet. What have you been up to, George Cooper? <laughs> Yes, dear, I'm back. Where did you disappear to after dinner? Oh, I was busy. Uh, come on in, Miss Crawford. Uh, certainly, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> uh, this is my wife. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> what is this, George? Well, I decided you were right, Liz, and that's why Miss Crawford is here. I've taken up a new hobby. What's the matter? Were they out of stamp albums? <laughs> no, I thought painting would be nicer. Uh, Miss Crawford is my model. Oh? Well, the main thing is I, I have to have something to occupy my mind when you're gone. You look like you're doing pretty well while I'm still here. <laughs> Well, you have your sculpturing, and I have my painting. Uh, now, if you'll pardon us. Uh, ready, Miss Crawford? Well, uh, you haven't told me if you wanted me draped or undraped. <laughs> undraped. Draped. I usually pose undraped. Draped. You've got a bad enough cold already. <laughs> Could I see you in the hall a minute? Okay. 
Uh, excuse me, Miss Crawford. Oh, to be sure. George, are you really set on being a painter? As long as you go on being a sculptor, I am. I just gave it up. <laughs> really? George, let's forget about hobbies. Uh, but what about when one of us is gone? I, I thought you wanted to prepare for that. Oh, let's not worry about it, George. Maybe by that time, science will have figured a way for us all to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me, George. Mm. <laughs> oh, George, that's going to be my hobby from now on. <laughs> Yes, Lucille, what's up? Well, tonight, Robert, I am something I have always wanted to be. A ballet dancer. A little ballet music maestro. Hello. Uh, they told me you were the premier danseuse. That's a dirty fib. <laughs> Well, I came to ask some questions. Uh, how's your ballet? Huh? I said, how's your ballet? Oh, fine, thanks. How's yours? I mean your new one. Your new dance. Oh, that... Well, it all takes place on a dessert. You mean a desert? I mean a dessert. It's called a jello jiggle. Yes, I, I, and, and I understand it's danced by the six delicious flavors. Is that right? Uh, no. Well, does it make you think of the real ripe fruit itself? Uh, no. How about the big red letters on the box? Yeah, how about them? <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. This dance can't be about jello if no one even says the flavor is locked in by a special process and can't get out till your first delicious spoonful. <laughs> I wonder how you're going to work that in. <laughs> well, I tell you, I ain't going to do the jello jiggle. I had an accident. An accident? Yep. Well, I'm sorry. How did it happen? Well, I had on my new shoes. See, they're kind of sharp. I spun six times. Once for strawberry, like this. Psh. Once for raspberry, like this. Psh. Once for cherry, like so. Psh. And once for orange, lemon, and lime, like this. Psh, psh, psh. Oh, <laughs> darn that jello diggle. I've done it again. What? Don't just stand there. Get me out. I dug myself right into the ground. <laughs> been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rory. Tonight's transcribed program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Lucille Ball can currently be seen starring in Columbia's laugh success, The Fuller Brush Girl. Watch for it when it comes to your city. Henry, what are you thinking about? Why, that new instant Sanker coffee, dear. It certainly is wonderful. Sure thing. Just look at the new richer coffee color. Taste the new full-bodied real coffee flavor. Discover how much less instant Sanka costs. And did you know the makers of instant Sanka make the only caffeine-free coffee? The kind that can't affect anybody's nerves or sleep. Try the new instant Sanka. It's wonderful. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... J-E-L-L-O, -L -O. the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tapioca puddings. Yes, sir. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.